Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the concept of Nash Equilibrium. Nash Equilibrium, of course, is named after the famous mathematician John F. Nash, which he developed in the 1950s and was a huge contribution to the field of game theory. The definition of Nash Equilibrium is actually quite simple. In a Nash Equilibrium, each player has a strategy, SI, so we have S1, S2, all the way out to SN, depending on how many players that we have. In equilibrium, I'm going to write a star on each of these strategies to denote that it is an equilibrium strategy. In a Nash equilibrium, each strategy SI star is a best response to everyone else's strategy. So S not I star. So player one's strategy is a best response to player two, three, four, all the way up to N. Player 2 strategy is the best response to player 1, player 3, and so forth, and all the way down the line so that all the players are all best responding to each other. This implies that every single player could not do better by switching to a different strategy. Remember that our definition of best response is that your strategy is at least as good as all the other possible strategies that you could pick, given what everybody else is doing. Now, if that's true for everyone, then no one has any incentive to change their strategy. A good way to think about this is that in a Nash Equilibrium, no one should have a regret over what they picked. They should never be thinking, well, if only I had played a different strategy, I could have gotten a better payoff. Based on what everyone else is doing, you could not improve your payoff by switching. Another thing to mention about Nash Equilibrium is that we're often going to see models that actually have multiple Nash Equilibria. There isn't just one situation where everybody is playing a best response. There might be different places where the best responses intersect. The best way to illustrate Nash Equilibrium is to look at some examples. So we're going to go back to our Prisoner's Dilemma and Battle of the Sexes games. Let's talk about how to figure out the Nash Equilibrium for the Prisoner's Dilemma. In a Nash Equilibrium, both players will be best responding to each other's strategies. A simple way to figure out the Nash Equilibrium for a normal form game is to underline the best responses for each player. I'm going to represent player 1 with a red pen. Let's look at player 1's best responses. If player 2 thinks, player 1 wants to think. That's our first line here. If player 2 stays silent, then player 1 also wants to think. So I'm going to underline the payoffs that player 1 is going to get from those best responses. Notice again that we've made a plan for anything that player 2 is going to do. I'm going to do the same thing with player 2 with a blue pen. Going through player 2's best response, we first have to think about what player 2 should do if player 1 thinks. So again, we compare the 1 and 0. The 1 is better. If player 1 stays silent, then player 2's best action here uh, is going to be to think because 3 is better than 2. Once we've done this, the Nash Equilibrium is going to jump right out at us. The only outcome where both players are playing best responses is right here at think think. This means that our Nash Equilibrium is think think. Player 1 thinks, player 2 thinks, both players get a utility of 1. An interesting feature of the Prisoner's Dilemma is that no matter what, Fink is always the best thing for both players. They don't care if the other player thinks or stays silent, Fink is always better. 1 is better than 0, 3 is better than 2. If that is the case, then we say that Fink is a dominant strategy. There's no situation in which you would rather not play that strategy. Most games, however, do not necessarily have dominant strategies, and that's going to include the next one we're going to look at. If we look at this from the perspective of the definition of Nash Equilibrium, do either players have an incentive to switch? What we want to look at is, would player 2 want to switch from Fink to Silent? That would bring them over here from 1 to 0, so that would be a no. Does player 1 want to switch? They would go from 1 to 0, that would again be a no, so we've confirmed that we are in a Nash Equilibrium. Let's talk about how to get the Nash Equilibrium for the Battle of the Sexes. As before, I'm going to use red to underline the payoffs for player 1's best response. For player 1, they would rather pick Opera if player 2 picks Opera, as 2 is better than 0. And likewise, they would always want to pick 
boxing if player two is going to boxing. For player two, we do this in reverse where we think about what should we do if player one is doing opera? Well, we should also do opera if player one picks boxing, then player two should also pick boxing. Now that we've marked out all the best responses, we can see that this game actually has two Nash Equilibria. We have one Nash Equilibrium at Opera Opera, we have one at Boxing Boxing. Note that the concept of Nash Equilibrium does not tell us which one of these two is going to happen, but it tells us when both players are playing best responses together. To confirm that this is in fact a Nash Equilibrium, think about, could either player do better by switching? Well, if both are already at Opera, by switching, you're now going to be at Boxing and getting zero because you've left the other person behind at Opera, and same thing for Boxing. You cannot improve by switching to Opera because you're going to get zero. So that's our two Nash Equilibria in this game. I want to mention one last thing about Nash Equilibria before we finish up here, and that's the concept of a mixed strategy Nash Equilibrium. All of the Nash Equilibria, and in fact all of the strategies that we've talked about so far, are what we call pure strategies. Pure strategies mean that you have a 100% probability of picking something. So for example, if you go to opera, I always go to opera. If you go to boxing, I always go to boxing. That's a pure strategy. A mixed strategy is one where we attach different probabilities to going to one of the two choices. So we could say, I am going to go to opera two-thirds of the time, I'm going to go to boxing one-third of the time. We don't have time in this course to get into mixed strategies and how those play into Nash Equilibria, but I just want to let you know that those uh, exist, and you might read about those if you go on reading about game theory in a, a deeper way than what we're going to do here.